Good evening and right to welcome everyone to the last vision meeting for the city of Canyon City for um, the year of 2023. And I'm really excited that today we get to really reflect on the accomplishments of Canyon City and, that, and all that we have done as a team between city council and the staff this year. Um, before we get started though, we do need to have a roll call. Councilmember Dennehy, absent. Councilmember Schmisher, here. Councilmember B. Smith, absent. Councilmember Stein, here. Councilmember Tracy, here. Councilmember Worthington, here. Mayor Pro Tem Hamrick, here. Mayor Smith, here. Thank you. I also would like to recognize that we have the up and coming mayor, Preston Troutman, is here in the audience today as well. Glad to have you here. And also just wanted to give a little shout out to, this is a good portion of the family, but not all of them. I'm really glad they just, some of them just came into town today and I'm really, really glad that they're here to support me in my last meeting. here. Thank you for coming guys. All right, Ryan, we're gonna turn some time over to you, I guess. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, we're here tonight to go over uh, State of the City, talk about uh, our 2023 accomplishments and 2024 goals. Uh, we don't usually have a vision meeting in December, so you know we usually have the state of the city in January, uh, but we've, we're able to fit it in here uh, end of the year. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, we'll cover these in a little bit more in detail in, in some of the future slides, but uh, I wanted to point out on, on this slide some of these accomplishments that we have. Um, you know, we, we have... A, a lot of items here that are, are software related. Uh, we have, um, you know, making a lot of strides towards improving the availability and transparency of city governments uh, through these uh, software updates. Uh, of some of the software that we use, um, it, it's 1990s era software and hasn't been updated uh, much since then. So there, there's a lot of things that have changed uh, over you know a few decades, so we're we're very excited to roll out that software to the community and uh, be more transparent and and offer um, you know more capabilities. Uh, something as simple as being able to take credit cards over the over the internet for contractor licensing. We we've never been able to do that before, and once the software gets implemented, we'll be able to do that. Uh, there are several projects here that had. Uh, you know, some type of funding from outside of the city. Uh, you know, we Highway 50 lighting, the pedestrian crossing, Main Street Improvement Grant, multimodal, uh, even the clock tower design, all of those were grants that we went out and sought to augment the, the dollars that we our taxpayers pay here in Canyon City, trying to stretch those dollars as far as we can to uh, get uh, as much bang for the taxpayer dollars as we, as we possibly can. I'm going to go ahead and... Maybe. Over here. <laughs> the, the computer's back there. Oh. Um, as uh, you mentioned earlier, we did have a city council election uh, this year. We have uh, a new mayor, McPreston Troutman, will take office in January, along with uh, reseating uh, council members Kathy Worthington, Tim Dennehy, and Amy Schmisher and a uh, new face to city council, but somebody who's been involved in our city government for a while through our planning commission, uh, Jerry Maloney, uh, taking an at-large seat. From an economic development standpoint, we welcomed a lot of new businesses this year. Um, you know, Arby's and Love's being the, the big ones that got a lot of, a lot of talk uh, this year. Uh, but we also saw 719 Jiu-Jitsu, Bordeaux's Barbecue uh, taking the place of Brews and Bikes here on Main Street, uh, Canyon City Printing uh, over at Fremont Center for the Arts, Charmeline Sassy, uh, Chelsea's Wings up where River Street was on Ninth Street, uh, the new fueling station at City Market, and uh, Reclaim Woodworks, Suburban Studios, Zenity Alternative Medicine, uh, Luna Grace Wellness and Oil City Coffee Bar, and if we forgot anybody, apologize. There, there are a lot of, uh, lots of new activity this year. Our building department, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we've identified a new software. That software is going to be going live in January for uh, the building department. Mid January, uh, we provided uh, webinar trainings through the Department of Energy program for our contractors. Uh, we did. Uh, just over a thousand new permits this year. 
Uh, you know, it's a little bit down from previous years, typically do around 1,200 permits. Um, and residential um, house plant, you know, single family homes, that number was down, obviously, with the uh, higher interest rates this year, uh, residential building was, was uh, down uh, across the board. Our city clerk, uh, you know, she helps us prepare for all of our city council meetings, but um, you know, also uh, works to ref you know work to refine uh, some more business licensing processes for liquor licensing, security guards, and door to door sales. Uh, she also served as uh, the director of the Colorado Municipal Clerks Board, uh, and uh, is uh, just a couple credits away from receiving her master clerk's uh, designation. So. Uh, on the economic development side. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, is it okay to jump in or do you want us to wait until the end? No, no, no. Awesome. I also just wanted to give a shout out. I heard um, some positive praise from uh, a couple of local business owners about the city clerk's efficiency with the new retail establishment liquor permitting process and just how excited they were about how smooth and easy it was and how they were able to roll it out kind of in time for this year and the holiday season and all of that. So another shout out to, to Clerk Foster Owens. Oh, thank you. And we uh, we strive to get those things through as, as quickly as we can and uh, be able to offer those uh, those new items when they come available through um, whatever source they're allowed. <laughs> uh, on, on the economic development side, uh, we were able to hire a small business liaison that replaced Tom uh, Dixon. Uh, took a while to find a, a replacement, uh, but we're very excited to have Ryan LeClaire as part of our team, and he's hit the ground running. Uh, meeting with a lot of our businesses, uh, and continued our service with the retail coach uh, from a retail recruitment standpoint. Um, we're seeing the you know a lot of uh, activity and uh, being able to work with uh, developers and landowners with the the retail coach certainly helps. Uh, we've worked uh, on our life safety and facade grants. Uh, next year we'll be adding a. Uh, building systems grants and uh, we'll, you know, some changes for next year. We'll have a, a grant cycle as well. Uh, opportunities for businesses and building owners to bring some of these business, uh, these buildings up to uh, some of the newer code standards. Uh, Rick Harmon, our economic development manager, he works very hard every year on the Startup Colorado Week or Southern Colorado Startup Week and uh, puts a lot of effort in that. Uh, this was the second year that we hosted it this past September, and uh, you know I understand that uh, you know the attendance that we get uh, you know for our size of community we, we're doing very well from an attendance standpoint for that for that programming. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission just finished a meeting right before this meeting, talking a lot about New Method Laundry and some of the challenges there. We did acquire the New Method Laundry building and going through the process of. Uh, the the funding hoops that we have to go through in order to uh, address the issues with that site, uh, but we do uh, hope to see that uh, building come down uh, next year. And then, of course, our grants uh, for this year. Uh, in 2020, we added a grant writer, and every year this number continues to increase. For 2023, we saw three million four hundred sixty thousand five hundred six dollars in grant activity uh, that's new dollars coming into the community uh, i mentioned earlier we're trying to leverage our local taxpayer dollars by bringing in additional funding through other sources and uh, this continues to pay dividends for the community and bring uh, very quality projects to the community Uh, along with those dollars, we see a lot of projects and uh, specifically with our public works department. So the, the Rhodes Avenue project, that was a project uh, funded through the stormwater uh, fund. And uh, we can only work on that project when the ditch uh, water is turned off. So uh, it, it's been extended. We're, we're working on it uh, now and that will go through April. Um, you know, it's planned to go through April to finish that project. Uh, there'll be boring that goes under the under the railroad, but um, you know some of those other projects. We have the Highway 50 East lighting project. We actually have a meeting tomorrow with a solar lights provider to talk about the, the options for solar lights on that project. Uh, the Highway 50 pedestrian project kicked off last week, and we have a lot of construction going on on Highway 50 right now. 
Um, we talked, uh, you know, designing and re the, uh, revitalizing the Main Street project for Main Street and the third intersection. And then, uh, you know, some of the projects, the, the more fun projects that, that we've done, you know, the bench and bike racks that went down on Main Street and creative crosswalks. Uh, we've we've got that RFP out right now. The designs have been selected and looking for printing partners to help us uh, with printing that. Uh, uh, Ryan, I just wanted to make a clarification yep. for the roads project. And that's been in, like, I mean, that's been a really long haul to get that one, to get the funding, to get it engineered, designed, and then the implementation has taken forever. And it's a hugely complex project. And um, I was noticing on social media, there's some a lot of hate comments about how ugly it is. And I just wanted to point out that we aren't the only ones that get to make decisions on what that project looks like or how it functions. Um, the railroad and the ditch company also had major voices in what their expectations and requirements requirements were to make to that would even allow that project to move forward. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it is so complex because there were so many entities involved. It was so many easements in one spot. It was never been tackled before because it was, it was said to be impossible to do. And the second part is that that project was not done to be able to accommodate future development at the Abbey lands. That project was strictly only to accommodate flooding that was happening today, right now, to those residents on that street and to those businesses and the homes there. And that when the Abbey does develop, that they are going to have to keep their stormwater on their property and manage it on their own property. And it cannot impact anybody downstream from them. So I just want to make those clarifications. Absolutely. And, and you know, going back to the complexity of that project, we, we were uh, talking with the railroad for, you know, nine months or more to get the permits. And, you know, it's part of the reason why some of this has lagged on as, as long as it has, because getting some of the clearances that we need through um, other agencies can take quite some time. Um, and speaking of other agencies with the, the two-way streets, uh, you know, this year we, we did Franklin, Reynolds, Pear, and Field College is being paved, uh, you know, Got two thirds of it done so far this week. Uh, their hope, their plan is to have it, uh, the paving done tomorrow. So, um, again, uh, you know these two A streets are very complicated. We we have to coordinate with other utilities, the sanitation districts, Atmos Gas, uh, phone companies. Uh, there, all all this infrastructure is in the in the street, and it takes a lot of coordination from our public works team and engineering team to. Uh, work through all of those different issues and it may seem like it's you know the project's taken a long time and oftentimes it is but that's because there's so many different entities that have to get into the street before we actually pave it because we don't want to be cutting up the street later to uh repair something that didn't get fixed uh, when it should have been fixed it's not just a canyon city thing it's a <laughs> gas it's an electric it's the sewer it's the water it's all of those things Absolutely. Combined. yeah i would also just like i've mentioned this before but since the sales tax was created and we started collecting money, um, we had 64% failed to poor streets, which is a horrible number. And we are on progress to at least flipping that to 46, to where now we have 47% that are satisfactory to excellent. And I'm just really proud that at the um, ability for us to take that 1% sales tax, we've never had a sales tax increase that's the one and only increase we've ever had in the history of Canyon City. And to see those streets getting fixed, it's really um, exciting. We can hope that we'll be able to continue to see that happen in the future. I'm sure it will. Uh, there's there's a lot of departments uh, at the city. And you know one that uh, you know, is unsung, doesn't get a lot of credit or a lot of face time is our facilities department. They do a lot of great work for, for uh, the city and all, all the different departments that we have. I know chief uh the police department utilizes them quite a bit uh they they went through completed an led lighting upgrades project. Uh, we received credits from black hills for that project um you know they they're constantly working to to provide a safe and clean environment uh within the city city buildings um the big one of the big projects that they completed this year was the completion of phase two of the police annex and 
uh, that that again was a multi-year project, uh, several years of of funding and putting the projects on hold because of COVID and not knowing where budgets were going to fall, and to to finally have that project complete uh, is is a great resource for our police department. Chief, Chief, do you want to enlighten us on that the blue room at the annex? I have a feeling you've had some action there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of council, that's our defensive tactics room. Um, I have been tossed around those mats a little a little bit. Um, that's uh, really an understatement, uh, City Administrator Stevens, talking about our facilities crew, um, Dave, and uh, they, they are absolutely phenomenal. We call them at a moment's notice. Uh, we have an issue. They resolve it. Uh, Long-term planning effects like this. We, the defensive tactics room on the left, the second picture, fourth picture are the extensions or expansions of uh, the Child Advocacy Center um, where they're better able to uh, serve our victims. Um, the third slide is our gym, our gym um, that uh, the police officers use to uh, try and get in shape or stay in shape. So yeah, I they they are just phenomenal. The work that they do and and uh, they're very responsive, and we we certainly couldn't we couldn't be where we are without them. They're they're phenomenal. Thanks, Chief. Uh, another uh, group of unsung heroes for the city. You don't see a lot from our human resources department, uh, at least not from a public face standpoint. Uh, but they they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes, making sure that uh, city departments are in compliance with. Uh, human resources laws and things like that. They provide a lot of trainings, sometimes to the chagrin of our department heads, uh, how many trainings that we have to do to, to be in compliance. But um, the, one of the big ones this year was performance management and rolling out the performance management system uh, and uh, you know doing uh, employee reviews. Our information technology department, we talked earlier about all the different softwares that we're rolling out, uh, trying to improve the citizen experience and transparency for our, our citizens. But, you know, they, they're they always uh, working uh, very diligently. You know, there's things that you don't even think about, like cybersecurity, where, you know, there, there are attacks on our servers constantly. And uh, our IT department is always there in the background, making sure that we have all of the security measures in place to to keep those uh, cyber attacks at bay. Uh, implementing things like um, you know Microsoft 365, uh, they just recently completed the conversion of our you know taking us from our Verizon phones to a new carrier in T-Mobile, and the the efficiency that they do their work is amazing. Um, you know, being able to transfer over all those phones and just about a week's time is uh, is uh, very commendable work that they do. Um, you know, another big project, and we'll talk a little bit more when we get to the water phase, or water slides, but that's the, the water tra treatment SCADA system design, the network design. Uh, you know, that, that's the system that runs the, the water treatment plant, so automates the water treatment plant. Uh, again, it's another system that was put in place in the 90s. Uh, we received word last year that the parts and the you know, weren't going to be able to be replaced and upgraded. So we're, we're using some of our ARPA funding from the federal government to, to replace the system. The design is uh, just about complete and we'll be going out to RFP early next year uh, for the actual uh, bid for replacement of that equipment. And again, uh, you know, IT does a lot of work for our police departments, uh, upgrading the, the mobile data ter terminals that the police department uses out in the field uh, so they can write their reports and be connected mm -hmm. to the network and still be out in the field to, to serve and uh, respond to calls. Our library does an amazing job. They they. Um, when we talk about community partnerships, you know, the police department has a lot of community part, um, community partnerships, but library and museum, they do a great job of building those community partnerships as well. Uh, working with boys and girls clubs, star points, uh, Colorado parks and wildlife, Head Start, pregnancy center, and among many, many others, the school district, uh, providing programs throughout the year, not just for children, but for adults as well. 
I know, um, you know, the annual Moores and McCumber concert is always a big favorite of Suzanne Lash, our library director. But, you know, th those things are things that connect uh, the city to our community. And, uh, you know, the the amount of attendance and connection that people have with our library is is absolutely amazing. You can add the 709 people that went through the library during the Christmas tree lighting. Just a couple of weeks ago, too. Yeah, ju just last week, we had over 240, I think, on Saturday show up to see Santa. Uh, and that was, you know, we had over 400 that came to visit the library that day alone. Well, that's extra awesome when um, I've seen, like, at, at the mall, so if you have to make reservations and pay money to see Santa now at the mall. And so, thank goodness at the library, the kids can just show up and anybody and everybody can go see Santa. Uh, and not to be outdone, the Museum and History Center, they do a lot of great work for the community as well. They, again, hike with paleontologists. Uh, as soon as those events are announced, they fill up. Uh, we are adding software to make it easier for people to sign up um, online for those types of events and reserve their spots. Um, I think the big news, and it was the number 10 story for the Daily Record this year, was uh, finding two new fossils um, here in the Royal Gorge region. So, uh, that was a, a big to do for for the museum and then uh, having those fossils worked on locally as well. So, you know, people could go to the museum and see people actually working on those on those fossils was an amazing uh, thing for for the library for the museum this year. Uh, the historic preservation and our certified local government also designated the Bonaire cottage as a onto the registry of uh, historic places. And then, uh, you know, things that you don't see, you know, the library or museum doing, it, you know, th they have their everyday programming, but they're also working behind the scenes to update management policies, emergency preparedness plans and things like that, that you, you don't see any anything about that. That's that's just work that's going on in the background. And it's, uh, you know, one of those things that we, we constantly have to address from an administrative standpoint, making sure that we're in compliance and that we've updated those plans. Um, I would also like to give a shout out to Lisa at the museum when we were studying um, our, our proclamation, kind of denouncing the KKK's um, history in Canyon City and just kind of telling our story of, you know, putting into perspective of that story and, and the movement that fought against the KKK and brought Canyon City out of that and where we are today in being an inclusive community that Lisa was put a lot of work into making sure we did some really thorough research and making sure that we reported that correctly. Thank you. Our parks department, uh, you know, they they do a lot of great work as well. Uh, they completed the 2.3 mile Watchtower Trail uh, extension for Temple Canyon Park. Um, they formed a couple of committees this year, one for Red Canyon Park and, and design of the trail system out there, but also the trails use uh, committee to look at how our trails are being used for some of these large events that come to come to town. Um, I, I don't know how many people realize, but the, the parks department actually used to have a cemetery division. And when the Royal Gorge fire happened, we, we lost some, you know, the, the funding you know, for the parks department comes from the revenue from the bridge. Uh, so the Parks Department lost things like the Forestry Division and the Cemetery Division. We've been slowly reestablishing those divisions uh, as, as we go. And so they, they were able to reestablish a, a dedicated uh, division for the cemetery this past year. Uh, we Part of that three plus million dollars of grant money was uh, for... Uh, that, we, that we received is for the uh, replacement of the maintenance facility for the parks department. So that uh, is a project that uh, RFP uh, is um, being negotiated. And I see that coming to city council, either the first or second meeting in January. So that is coming forward and that will be a major project for 2024. Uh, the, Parks department, just like our facilities department is working on upgrading to um, LED lights, the parks department's working on smart water irrigation uh, devices. Uh, so it's not watering when it's raining outside and things like that. It's, be, it's easier to control and uh, manage uh, remotely. Uh, right now we have to we have to send people to each of the individual parks to, to shut the water off if we need to for um, 
uh, if it's raining or if there, there's a major issue, we can do that remotely once these uh, this pilot uh, system is is done. And then, uh, you know, one thing that we we did, I don't know that we publicized it too much, but part of the old Skyline Trail, the, the wall collapsed, the Parks Department went out there and rebuilt that wall as well. Uh, planning and zoning. Uh, we uh, we received a, a grant to do the uh, design for Clock Tower Plaza. We have a 50% design. Uh, that project uh, had a lot of public input and was uh, we'll be looking at uh, at that uh, in the future here next next year as well. Uh, we had 26 new or renewing food truck cart permits. Uh, I think that is a record. We don't know that we've ever had 26 before. That's a new high. Uh, I think when when I started, we had about a dozen or so back in 2017. So uh, the food truck industry here in Canyon City is is growing and seems to be very healthy. I know the merchants work very closely with a lot of those food trucks to to bring them down to Main Street and generate attraction down there. Uh, planning department worked on uh, information nook at city hall for a do it yourself uh, information center and uh, you know do, they've done some uh, educational programs and plan on doing more educational programs uh, with planning commission and city council next year i'm going to stop talking for a little bit i've got some slides here for uh, chief schick and let me know when you're ready to move to the next slide sir all right thank you um the police department has been working very hard this year. Uh, we uh, we have adopted the city's mantra within our mission statement of service excellence and working within the parameters of 21st century policing principles, um, which serves the city and the organization uh, very well. Um, we've 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 accomplished quite a bit this year, focusing on delivering that high level of service. Um, we are establishing a crisis negotiation unit to support our tactical team. Uh, in critical incidents um, to help uh, negotiate things uh, away from a use of force. Uh, our community service officers have handled over a combined 2,470 incidents in 2023, uh, 1,263 codes, 790 animal and mobile home inspections of about 417. Um, and they, to this date, still maintain a posture of about 80% voluntary compliance uh, before moving to enforcement, which is absolutely phenomenal uh, uh, feat um, by folks uh, in our code enforcement units. Um, identified and trained new bike patrol officers. We're, of course, we're looking to expand that with the recent uh, grant that we received from the federal government, uh, but uh, we have, uh, identified and trained, uh, certified and trained a new uh, IPEMBA, which is International Police Mountain Bike Association uh, trainer, train a trainer um, to uh, expand that capacity within the department. Right now we have five certified bike officers and uh, certainly we're gonna look to expand that posture as we try to move forward with this grant. Um, maintaining our partnership with Battle to beat auto theft uh, through law enforcement initiative. Um, can't see what that bottom one is. Uh, full scale, we're moving to a full scale active shooter exercise next year. So we've met with officer, Office of Emergency Management. We've met with the schools. Um, we've done some tabletops and we're planning uh, logistically. We sent all of our SROs, our school resource officers to Texas to get uh, alert certified active law enforcement response and uh, critical threats, and um, that happens to be the ind industry standard or best standard, uh, best practice for response to uh, those types of events. Um, we conducted Junior Law Enforcement Academy again uh, this this summer, um, and uh, I, don't, I don't see it in there, but uh, we also hosted our first, uh, our first um, Citizens Academy this year where we had uh, uh, 20 plus uh, citizens come in and learn more about their police department, meet their meet their officers, meet their professional staff. Uh, we one of our attendees is here. Mr. Maliko was one of our attendees. Uh, a great time. Uh, we did uh, shop with a cop with uh, wasn't quite 102 children. I think we we rounded out about 98. 
Um, we had a phenomenal day uh, Saturday. Community policing in action. We had uh, underserved kids that, of course, we were helping, but uh, we had a very wide swath of, of citizenship coming together from uh, the police department, other peer agencies like the Bureau of Prisons, Department of Corrections, uh, city, city staff, uh, school district personnel, and then a, a wide array of, of different private uh, citizens and groups, business owners. Um, I think we had nearly 200 volunteers in the uh, final count on the initiative. And um, it was just a very proud moment for the PD um, to partner with the community in such a, a large and, and worthwhile endeavor. Um, so at other community events that we talked about, you know, uh, we continue to try and expand our, our community engagement profile. Um, we hosted a number of coffee with a cop with cops. Uh, we went to Boo at the Bridge, Trunk or Treat. October is always a very busy month. Um, Star Point basketball game was another huge success, uh, partnering with them. And we've already talked about the, uh, the COPS grant. And of course, that's going to be, you know, an initiative that we hope um, will allow us while, while navigating the legal landscape and offering services to people who want and need the help, um, it's going to give us leverage to focus on quality of life issues um, and uh, hopefully mitigate some things that our, our business districts facing, our, our river walks facing. Um, we, we, we deployed our bicycles uh, throughout the end of 22 and most of 23. Um, and we've, we've had uh, substantial success down there um, with uh, mitigating illegal camping, making our river walk a much more pleasant place for uh, folks to go down and, and enjoy themselves and get, get exercise and just experience uh, the wonderful weather that uh, Canyon City has to offer. Um, of course, we had uh, some legislation that set our canine uh, unit back uh, when we had to retire our canine units. Um, and uh, we have since in 23, uh, as late as last week, received our second handler and, and uh, canine radar, um, welcomed him back in the office. So it's Officer Lozano in the bottom there. You can't see his dog radar. Beautiful Dutch Shepherd. Um, but they, they went out to North Carolina. They were out there for six weeks. Uh, they just came back last week and rejoined uh, the patrol units. And and uh, we're real happy to have them back. Uh, great looking dog. Uh, Officer Loz Lozano's uh, just eager to, to get out there and go to work. And that's Officer Fry and Cassio. And then this year, we also, in recognition of uh, the mental health uh, concerns, emotional concerns associated with constantly responding to uh, challenging situations, we uh, expanded our peer support program and brought in Joey, our, uh, our peer support canine, um, who always brings down the temperature in the room when he comes in. And, and it's really neat to see our officers laying on the floor with him and petting him uh, just, to, just to take it down a notch or two. Um, so we're real, real happy about that. Uh, launch Crime Watch. We had our uh, second group meeting, third group meeting tonight or this afternoon uh, to expand that footprint. Um, and it's going to allow us to uh, bring a more seamless message uh, to uh, Canyon City uh, through through Crime Watch. And that incorporates other social media. So it'll be our clearinghouse for messaging. Um, long list of community community uh, engagement events um, some we already talked about uh, 12 over 1200 man hours um, coming out and just partnering with the community in different capacities um, building our relationship uh, which is you know a, a centerpiece of 21st century policing uh, building that trust and transparency that first pillar so uh, real real proud of all the folks uh, at the PD for committing to that and, and really investing themselves in it. Uh, Star Point basketball game, I absolutely love that picture. It's in our hallway. Um, again, that's just us partnering with Star Point. Um, some very wonderful folks and souls there that uh, we love to play basketball against every year. And unfortunately, we just can't seem to win. We always, we always get our tails kicked. The um, audience is getting so large each year at this event. Really? 
Star Point is actually looking at moving to another school that has a we bigger may have to look capacity. at the high school or something. Last year we were pretty full. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Chief. Yes. Uh, public information officer, uh, she works very closely with all of our city departments and is integrated into just about everything that we do. Uh, Christy Gotham is always uh, monitoring our social media accounts and responding. And, um, you know, when we have things that are attributed to the city that may become from a false account or whatever it might be, we track that down and we try to set the record straight to, as best we can. But you know, some of the other things that, that Christy worked on this year, um, First Friday Facebook page, um, we also have been uh, assisting with uh, and putting out a, um, uh, a newspaper ad uh, in the shopper for First Friday events. Uh, she was uh, the lead on redesigning the city's web page or the website. Uh, she also has worked very diligently to help increase uh, the subscriptions to the e-notify system, uh, nearly doubling it from last year. And then also the Facebook page, adding 1,200 uh, new followers over last year. So, uh, you know, we we try to do everything that we can to get messaging out and looking at all the different avenues that we can do that. And uh, Christy's a big part of doing that behind the scenes, trying to get those subscriptions and those followers up, uh, but also putting out that messaging as well. Well, it's a big deal because we didn't even have any of this just a few years ago. Christy has taken it from scratch and created all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. Our streets and stormwater departments, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to go through everything that you have up on the screen, but I think the big things, you know, the stormwater culvert uh, clean outs 5.35 miles, uh, 7.28 uh, bobtail dump truck loads of material uh this was a huge thing a couple of years ago this program did not exist a couple of years ago where we had a vacuum truck that would go out and clean these storm drains and um it, ever since it was implemented I, you know we've seen that the the stormwater system operates the way uh, it's supposed to when uh where it where it is in place there were 4080 potholes repaired that was 162 more than last year um, about a quarter of those come directly from citizen requests. Uh, when we get those requests, uh, they get put on the list. And oftentimes there, you know, we try to get those uh, repaired uh, within about 48 hours if possible. So, uh, you know, please use the tools that we have out there like C Click Fix to uh, report those potholes. We are going out there proactively finding them, but um, you know, if there's one that's just seems to be very onerous on your car, let us know. We'll, you know, we, we, we try to be everywhere, but uh, unfortunately can't, can't, uh, we don't have eyes everywhere that uh, we'd like to uh, in order to get those, uh, those fixed. And then uh, 96 utility cuts for the water and street departments. So uh, that street department uh, stays very busy uh, patching those uh, utility cuts over, over the year. And uh, that, that department works very, very hard to try and keep and maintain uh, the streets that we do have in good condition. Our water department, uh, they stayed very busy this this past year. Thank you. Um, you know, the, one of the things that uh, we had been waiting on for quite some time and was delayed because of some of the COVID delays were the variable frequency drives for the water department. Uh, this is a energy saving measure. We received rebates uh, back from Black Hills to help install these, um, and they they were installed earlier this year. Uh, you know, they've uh, relocated 475 feet of 12 inch water main that was in conjunction of the, the Rhodes Avenue project. Um, replaced uh, 225 feet of eight inch water main for a county project at Grandview Bridge. And then uh, fourth, uh, they had to inspect 4,000 feet of 12 inch water main installation for the the loves project. So there, there's a lot of departments that go into all of these projects that are, that are going out in the community. And uh, I just can't impress upon how, you know, what a great staff we have and, and how hard these departments work for the community. Uh, 
talked a lot about uh, our 23 projects. A lot of those are carrying over for 24. Uh, a couple of the ones that I didn't mention uh, will be evaluating uh, our human resources software for, uh, you know, whether or not we should replace that. Uh, and then discussion around the Clark Station, the Black Hills property uh, will be taking place early next year as well. Uh, it seems that we're at a place now where Black Hills is ready to to transition that property. So there will be a lot of discussion about that in the first quarter of, of the new year. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. I'm just really proud of the work. It's a, a lot has gotten done, gotten done when you put it all together. And, it, and it's a huge mix. I mean, what it takes to operate a really effective police department is a completely different than a museum or a library or the streets. And, and it just, this is an incredible team that has come together to take care of all of this. And Ryan, thank you for being at the helm and making sure that it all gets orchestrated. Thank you, appreciate that. And that's, that's all we have prepared. Okay. Well, good luck to you guys. You guys still have a lot of work to do in 2024, and I'm really excited for you all. Thank you, thank you in advance. <laughs> I'll be cheering you on. Looks like Emily Tracy does have a comment that she'd like to make online. Oh, I yeah, just wanted to add to what you said, uh, Mayor Smith, that uh, we really are fortunate. The, the city does a lot of different things, and we're fortunate to have uh, really fine staff in every department and at the top in the administration. And so just wanted to thank everyone, uh, Chief and his department, everyone for the work that's done and looking forward to 2024. Absolutely, I have the utmost, utmost confidence that you'll continue to move forward with excellence and in, in achieving all these amazing things for Canyon City. The future is looking really awesome, so thank you. All right, with, if there's no more comments. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.